Here's the story of how we went from this to this. The concept was simple. I wanted to fly a grand piano for a music video. Let's take it back to summer 2021. We picked up a broken baby grand off FreeCycle and schlepped it back to the Parajet workshop for a rebuild. With the help of my cousins, I began work on the piano. Being more qualified than me for the job, my genius 11-year-old cousin, Barney, took the reins as head engineer. The baby gram was heavy, so we stripped out the insides, leaving only the shell. We even drilled holes in the wood. We wanted this baby as light as possible before adding the steel frame. I took my electric keyboard apart carefully so I could use it again afterwards and screwed it in place onto the baby grand. Barney and I made a steel frame to make the piano strong enough to fly. We welded on a drum stool for the seat and reinforced the pedals. The idea being that I could brace myself with my legs between the pedals and the body of the piano. Nugget. What can I say? We're on a tight budget, and let's be honest, me and Barney love a good budge. This wooden nugget is one of our finer budges. It would act as a spacer to level the frame and lock it to the body of the piano. Gylo, my mad inventor uncle, has been known to build and fly anything he can get his mitts on, including a flying car. Gylo reckoned the plan was good and endeavoured to help us develop the design from deranged stickman drawings to a real-life flying piano. Before flying the piano, we hang-tested it to make sure it was perfectly balanced. By the end of that summer, a rough model of the Baby Grand Eagle 3000 was ready for action. Here's flight number one. So the piano actually flew. In our excitement, we pushed the piano back up the hill and went for round two. But the wind was gone and it was getting dark. Still, a successful first day. The piano was balanced and it did fly, but the design was rough and bulky and it was still in the half wheelbarrow, half piano stage. It was time for an upgrade. It was also completely wonky, which meant I had to take off and land at an angle to avoid skidding and breaking the piano. Back to the workshop, we find the design. We detached the bulky scrap metal frame and built a new smaller one to fit neatly behind the existing legs of the piano. We also temporarily nicked some of Jalo's wheels, which looked much better. Here's test flight number three. After crash landing the piano, we all agreed there was only one sensible thing left I could do. We had discussed me wearing a harness, but the idea of being strapped to the piano seemed potentially more dangerous. The takeoff spot was short and steep. I wanted to be free to jump off in case the wing didn't launch properly and the piano couldn't be stopped. Luckily, it never came to that. The crew had my back. Flight number five was easy. Unlike all the test flights of the small hills, the wind here was steady. Tim managed to get some great shots on the first run. Oh, yeah. 
After that, we had to wait six months until another window came. But when it did, the whole crew was ready. We had my dad, who knew the hill and the winds there like the back of his hand. We had Bruno, who was keen as mustard, if mustard was keen. And Joel the Mole, a dab hand when it comes to pushing out a big one. Not to mention Keza, otherwise known as Safety Jack. He wisely recommended that I super glue my bum hole firmly shut for good measure. Eventually, the wind picked up and the lads gave me a good shove off the edge of the hill. I was now just about comfortable enough to let go of the brakes and play the piano for 20 second intervals while flying along. The feeling of flying the piano was completely different from paragliding, where you're all buckled up and dangling uncomfortably. Somehow, this felt much closer to a childhood dream, like a kind of flying chariot or a magic carpet. This time, Senor Pellegroso was able to follow me in his drone all the way, getting some amazing shots of takeoff, playing, and landing. I had originally wanted to do a one-shot take and actually play and sing the whole song in one flight. But in the end, I hit a speaker in the piano and played along in time with the recorded song so we could cut the shots together. I'd begun to cut the film with Francisca and we realized we were close to making our ridiculous vision come to life. After years of anticipation, we just wanted to get it in the bag and everyone was up for helping us on our mission. After flight number eight, we had more than enough footage. Plus, I was still in one piece. But there was one final thing we needed. Francisco and I had dreamed up the idea of having the video start in a rundown old room with me playing the piano. So my brother and I scavenged the materials from an old warehouse and built the fake room around the piano. The idea was to take the audience on a wild, mind-expanding adventure. From the grimy, faded room, the walls would fall apart revealing the luscious green rolling hills where the piano would take flight. Finally, our vision had come together and the mission was complete. Yeah.